wonderful people. Welcome to another great and mind-blowing episode of Touched by Faith. Are you stopped or you need refreshing? This is the right program for you. My name is Olufunke Omu. Right now, a message of hope is coming to us from God himself through his son, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboe, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God. Please don't go anywhere because it promises to be a great and a glorious time on this program today. Unable to sleep? God wants to speak with you. Tune into Redeemer's Network Television. Redeemer's Network Television. Pastor E.A. Adeboye, Redeeming the Time. Whatever problems you are facing, roll it onto the Almighty God. And once you cast your burden upon Him, leave it there. Yes, it's more than enough to handle whatever may be your problems. Once you pray, leave the rest to God. He will answer your prayers. Oh, some of us might say, but I've prayed, I've, uh, and I've been waiting, I've, I haven't received an answer yet. Well, not too long ago, we studied in our Open Heavens devotional. The angel said to Daniel, the very day you prayed, God sent an answer. Oh, yeah, there was a delay for 21 days, but the answer came. The answer still came. Let me conclude. He said, well, I'm not even sure that that the Jew is a prophet. He's not. He's a pastor. But I'm sure you know Isaiah was a prophet. And he said, there can't be any doubt about that. I mean, he, he prophesied about the Lord Jesus Christ more than anyone else. He is the one who said, Behold, the virgin shall conceive. I mean, if he wasn't an established prophet, they would have killed him. Of course, he came to pass. He was the one who prophesied, By his stripe, you are going to be healed. That's Isaiah. Now, the same Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with him. So even if you don't believe me, believe Isaiah, that your tomorrow will be all right. However, if you are not born again, <laughs> the same Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 11, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 11, he said, Woe to the wicked! For he shall be healed with him. He said, uh, you are not on the side of Jesus Christ. You have not surrendered your life to him. He said, hey, hey, hey. you're looking for trouble. So may I appeal to you. If you want to pass through whatever challenges you are facing, you better cross over to the right side. Cross over to Jesus Christ. He's the one who can make a way where there's no way. His name is the way. Surrender your life to him. What are you gaining from sin anyway? Come over to the side of the one who can see you through. And one day, very soon, you too will be singing and praising the almighty God for victory. So all over the world, wherever you are listening to me now, if you want to cross over to the side of the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to surrender your life to him, will you please bow your heads where you are and cry unto him and say, I'm surrendering my life to you. Please have mercy on me. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Yeah. 
the Redeemed Christian Church of God, a global church. For more information, visit us at www.redeemersnetwork.tv Welcome back. I hope you have been blessed by that word that has come to us through God's son, Pastor Ibn Adejari Adewe. So for more messages by Pastor Adewe, please visit our YouTube channel or any of our social media handles that is displayed on your screen right now. And for comments and feedbacks, Please follow us on the same social media handles. If you would love to share your testimony with the world, you can also reach out to us on any of these platforms. So according to the book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 20, it says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. This family today that will be bringing their, 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 their story to us today is one family that I respect their level of faith. What, 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 what would you say of, of a parent that their child, a child of about 12 or 13 years old, was diagnosed with the cancer of the blood and they, they decided not to go the medical way but totally believe in God that is going to heal their child. And then God did it. But you know what? Let's listen to Ian Oluma and her mother as they shared with us how their faith touched God. And then God in return came through for them. My name is Yanulu Wadbenladi Oshubito, and here with me is my mom, Pastor Mrs. Adeniki Oshubito. My dad, um, Pastor Professor Femi Oshubito, is the pastor in charge of Oshubi Su, the official pastor in charge of Oshubi Su region of Niri. And um, I am the second of three girls. I'm the second born of three girls. Um, my salvation experience, the first time I gave my life to Jesus Christ was in 25 years, was in 25 and it was also the day, like, um, the idea was in Ifra at that particular time, it was in January, the um, OAU campus outreach, and um, he, called, he made another call and I went out to give my life to Jesus Christ, and I also dedicated my life to Jesus Christ when I was in 200 level with my university. Um, we had a program called Jesus Rush, and then the um, pastor in charge, pastor anchoring the program, and that is Pastor Gladys Owako. Yes, she made another call too, and I want that to increase my life to Jesus Christ. My parents are pastors, they are pastors, they are both pastors, and growing up in a Christian family, in a Indian Christian family, they have always been very intentional about leading their children to Christ. My three, my two sisters, my elder and my younger sister too, they have, we have, the two of us, we have always been on that path. Immediately we became, immediately we gave our life to Jesus Christ. Even before we gave our life, fully gave our life to Jesus Christ, we have always been involved in the church activities, in the children class, in the class, even on the way to the adults church we have always been involved in the activities of the church and in any christian activity all all around or not departments i mean the choir department and also the media department of the church in the schools and drama and drama
Shower. Shower. Oh, baby. When did you go in? I've been looking for a while. And when I tried the door, so it was open and I entered the police wall. Well, how did you know I was inside? I was about going into this place that I should turn back that the door was opened. Uh, so what can I do for you? I'm just going for a prayer section at chapel and my spirit said that you're not okay. I should my check with my head. Is everything alright? I am tired of living this way. I can't take it anymore. Living this way, how? I'm too ashamed to say it. Don't even laugh at me. You never said it and you've concluded that I will laugh at you. This is something. You will laugh at me if I tell you. I can't talk about it. Yes. It is one of the three games that we had to the glory of God. And she's a very active girl. She is the most active of the three. And um, she loves to sing. She she's very active when it comes to doing the work of God. And um, she she doesn't get sick um often. So until the time when she she came home and we had to go for a medical test in the hospital when she was being diagnosed to be having a leukemia, which is cancer of the blood. And hearing the diagnosis that day, it was as if somebody dropped fire on my head. I felt the heat from my head and I felt it to my to the sole of my feet. And I I looked at it. She is somebody out of the three. She doesn't get sick and she has not been hospitalized before. So I was wondering what could have caused this? And I said, God, this is not our agreement. You gave me three girls and you did not tell me that I'm going to lose any of them. I'm being a medical person. I'm a nurse by profession. I have nursed cases of leukemia and uh, I knew their prognosis was very poor. I was resuming um, SS1 that year, 2013, December. I was resuming SS1 in a new school, in a school that they were taking, they, they take medical tests very seriously. I did eye tests, I did blood tests, I did all the tests. But I didn't do it immediately I was entering, I did it after first term, which was December, when I, when I came home for Christmas break. And there were no symptoms at all, I didn't see, I didn't, I didn't feel anything, I didn't even feel sick. There was no form of sickness or like maybe I was feeling feverish at a particular period. We just did the test and I went back to school in January. There was no symptom of any kind. And my parents did not tell me that after the um, blood test that I was diagnosed of became, I just continued to school. Uh, after then, I realized that mom, especially mom, kept coming to school to get my blood samples on a regular basis. On a regular basis. I don't know, out of nowhere, I've read about um, leukemia somewhere before. I didn't watch the movie on it. And I knew about chemotherapy. At my young age, I didn't really know what it really entailed. I just said it one day. Out of the blue, that ah, God don't let me be a chemo patient too. And mom did not say anything after that, she didn't tell me. But I still kept, I still kept going to school and she just kept coming to get my blood sample every time. I didn't feel anything. I still kept going through my education the way it was. After the test was done and she was being diagnosed, I did not show any alarm. I did not raise any alarm. I didn't want her to know. Because I know psychologically it will affect her. And um, they already told us, the consultant already told my husband and I, call us to the hospital. She, he advised us, he said, um, you are a federal worker. My husband is only a federal worker. We shouldn't have problem treating this, uh, uh, pay, um, our daughter. I to require money. 
and that he solicit the medical uh, chief medical director of the hospital to assist me. I was just thinking. And my husband, I look at my husband, he looked at me. I said, after he discussed with us, he said, it's okay, we, we will get back to him, which we did not do till tomorrow. We went away. So, they said we should bring her to the hospital for treatment. And we kept doing the test again. She, she did it before she went to school. She did that test twice, especially the bone marrow aspiration, which is the, uh, the most important test that must be done to confirm the confirmatory test of leukemia because the bone marrow uh, sample will have to be withdrawn and then uh, test under microscope to confirm the cancerous cells. And the consultant told us that this thing is still is still there, that there is nothing you can do than to treat it. After that, the Jew came and she was being prayed for. I was going back to his army and school to take blood sample so that we can know whether, because we have started praying, whether it is still there or not. And all the tests that were done with those samples, still confirm that the leukemia is still is still there. I had my suspicions after they kept coming on a regular basis. But I was still about 13 years old. It didn't click. It didn't really click. I felt that okay maybe there was something you know not something wrong. There was nothing big. I said this is mom and dad they didn't show any sign of um, there was something wrong they were like everything is fine, everything is fine. So I, didn't, I didn't really bother myself about it so I just kept like living my life. God helped me because I knew the pros and cons of this disease condition but even my colleague in the hospital I did not discuss with them because I knew the advice they would give me is that I should release her for treatment and I know the implication of the treatment. A friend doctor whose wife was an hematologist discussed with his husband, I mean her husband at home. Seeing her, I did not know the, the woman as members of her church. Just, I just knew her as a doctor and I greeted her in the department where we did the test. So not know that she is a wife of one of our doctors that work in my own department, in the theater department. So when I got to the hospital, man came to me, she said, uh, Mommy, I want to ask for something from you. Will you give me? I said, ah, I can't promise you until you tell me what you want from me. If I have it, definitely I will give you. But I cannot promise that I will give you. Just first tell me what you need from me. Then one of your daughters said, ah, one of my daughters. There is no, none of them is of marriageable age. That was what came to my mind. I said, for what? She said, ah, hey, please, mommy, my wife is an hematologist. But when she said that, I quickly understood that, okay, my wife is one of those that saw my daughter. She said, I just smiled. I said, please, mommy, let her be treated. I said, I just smiled. I said, don't worry. We, myself and my husband, we have agreed that God is going to heal her. I'm not going to subject her to chemotherapy because chemotherapy on its own as it destroys the cancerous cell the normal body cell is being destroyed and the aftermath of it is always a, a disastrous so i do not want to subject her i said i trust my god he will heal her i said myself and my husband we have agreed he just knelt down very tall man huge he just knelt down and started crying. He said, please, mommy, please release her. I said, please, just agree with us. I'm begging in Jesus' name. Agree with us and let us believe that God is going to do it. So I wasn't, I, I wasn't moved. I was, I was so strong that God 
no, please, I, I, I just look at it as an opportunity for God to prove His mightiness in my life because I've experienced ah uh, wonders of God in so many ways before, and so the experience of the past gave me the assurance that this God is going to do wonder again. That it is an it is an avenue for God to prove how great He is in my life. So I trusted God and I informed uh, one of our father in the Lord, Pastor Awedi, Paul Awedi, is in Netherlands. My daughter has been diagnosed to, to be having the king. I said, but I believe God is on the throne and he will prove himself. Daddy, please pray along with us. So that was, um, Daddy prayed with me, Daddy, and I kept my calm. And I did not discuss it with my colleagues because I know that they will tell me that ah in fact they are alarm exclamation alone will, will destabilize me so it was between me and my husband and the doctor that, that consultant um pastor is a pastor also the the consultant that first diagnosed her the senior consultant the consultant in charge of the whole department was the one who now called us to advise us but this man who is a pastor told us that please take this girl to see daddy Gio. he advised us he, he said it about three times please take this girl to see daddy Gio. and fortunately daddy Gio came to ife for campus outreach we sought audience with uh, daddy Gio, and we were able to see daddy Gio himself and me herself and daddy i i was busy in the hospital i couldn't follow them but Daddy took her and Daddy Gio prayed for her and that was the end of the week. I don't know why it's I, I was like come about the entire situation because I was not curious. I wasn't even curious to know what was going on. I wasn't curious at all. That day I was in school. That I just showed up out of nowhere. You know, we're having, we're having absolute prep because it was a boarding because it was a boarding school. We're having absolute prep. So he just came and I was like, I should go and dress up, I should go and wear my screen uniform. And we are going to see, we are going to see that Jew. He didn't say, we are going to see that Jew immediately, he just said we are going out. That was um, in Riddimah's International Academy, if you So we just, I was in my school uniform and I entered the car, I was just going, went for the, went for the outreach. My younger star was there, my younger star too was in school. She was in that same school, but she didn't know what was going on as well. So, after the um, program, it was late in the around eight o'clock. It was very late in the evening, Sha. We went to see that like, in the lodge in the and um, this is the lodge when we were lodging in for the night. He saw us. We just said that like, hey, you should pray for us. No, my dad, no, my dad just said that like, you should pray for us. He made his hand on me. And just pray a very simple prayer. Whatever is in our life that is not of you, that I take it away. That was the simple, very simple prayer that we prayed. I still did not suspect anything. The next day I went back to school. And that was that was the end. She has been held this then. She did not fall sick at all, not even once to be hospitalized in the hospital. But before then, before she came home, she was he had, I had, I had, I had malaria. I had malaria in school. In fact, that was what prompted the test. That was why the the nurse in charge of their clinic said we were you yeah, know before you resume bring your medical report oh. bring your medical report oh. so that was what made us to go for for that test for the blood test that yes and they said that uh, she was uh, falling sick was admitted in the uh, clinic and she couldn't go to class and she was very weak as a young he learned that even if she had malaria before she left for school, if you ask her to take drugs, she said, Mommy, please, let me take that drug. Mommy, please, Jesus will heal me. He said, if you force her to take the drug, she will vomit it. She doesn't take drugs. She will say, Jesus will heal me. And Jesus will heal And she will be okay. We want to be doing any tests after. We want to be doing any tests after. It was now when I was entering one. 
Okay. That they used to do, we used to do, a, we used to do testing for and the information. So we all did it. I just did it in the school, and then called me that. Did they see anything? Did they see anything in my blood? And I said they didn't. They didn't call me for anything. They didn't see anything after the blood test. What said I should go? I didn't say anything. I said okay. So at 2017, they now revealed to me. They now told me that that time I was so I was coming for my blood in 2013. That they kept coming. Well, I was in secondary school that I had leukemia. Throughout, they didn't tell me till 2017. She was about to enter. When I was, I was already in the same, I was in the same level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miracle water from Miss Keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He is a miracle water. He healed that little girl of cancer of the blood. He is still in the business of doing it. So, whatever challenge it is that you are going through, today I offer you a way out. And the way out is Jesus. Yes, he is the solution to all problems and all challenges. Are you watching this program for the very first time and you would love to catch up on all the past episodes? Please visit our YouTube channel. And for more faith lifting episodes of Touched by Faith, join us same time, same station next week. Till we come your way again, I remain Odo Funke. Oh, remember, the solution to every problem and every challenge. Jesus Christ. Whoa.